All righty, Shelly. What kind of results do we got? All right, it looks like we've got the majority of attendees are using 6.2, 53% uh, of them are. We've got 11% using 5.1 or below. 16% of our respondents are uh, at 6.0, 21% at 6.1. So 6.2 uh, with 53% is definitely the winner. Awesome. Well, that is good to hear that everybody's, uh, or at least half of us are, are keeping, you know, fully up to date with the latest releases. Um, that is some interesting data points. Uh, there are some phenomenal capabilities uh, in PowerConnect 6.0, 6.01, and 6.02 that have really started to accelerate some of the value and the data sets that we're able to get out of SAP. Um, so if you are still on especially 5.10 or 6.0, there's an enormous amount of functionality uh, that you can almost immediately be begin taking advantage of uh, through doing a, a simple spam upgrade uh, in your SAP system. So uh, obviously this will need to start in a, a non-productive environment in your sandbox or your dev system uh, just to make sure the, the process goes smoothly and you can transport that configuration up to prod uh, under your own time timeline, but uh, this is a relatively straightforward process. Definitely recommend you take some of these key features uh, that came out in a combination of 6.0, 6.01, and 6.02. Um, there's a lot of granularity uh, that we provide on the stat extractor uh, as of 6.01 and 6.02. There's actually 16 new event subtypes uh, sitting underneath stat that will give you the details of each one of those individual tabs or extra screens that you would look at when you're looking at the STAD transaction in SAP itself. So if there were table information about a, a BOPI command that was executing and you wanted to get details about how many direct reads of those tables uh, were executing uh, in that transaction, you can pull all of that information via the, the sub table event type under STAD. If you're looking for RFC communication details, the destination server, uh, the response time of what uh, was executed, the underlying function or program that ran, any web service call transactions that you're getting from STAD. So you know, really just an enormous amount of, of valuable data to slice and dice in, in new facets ways. Uh, based on popular demand, uh, we also created some ST03 extractors and dashboards uh, that will correlate exactly what you're looking at when you go into ST03N. Um, we had a variety of customers that wanted to do data validation between the, the old way of, of how they would do things previously and what they're seeing on the PowerConnect side. And the level of granularity that we get with PowerConnect through the STAT extractor actually doesn't match some of the aggregated data that SAP shows you in ST03. Um, so that created a few discrepancies uh, over the last couple of years as, as we implemented some of this. Um, wanted to make sure that everybody had the ability to correlate you know, what they used to do with what they're currently doing, and then ultimately take that step to actually using raw STAD data to get that amazing level of granularity uh, through dashboards like what, what Greg and, and James showed earlier today. Um, we've got some additional capabilities around batch job analytics, pulling job logs, spool files. Uh, we have a new S-Trust extractor in 6.02, as well as a lot of app usability enhancements. I've got a few examples uh, of some dashboards here to, to quickly show you. Um, you know, this is uh, still the PowerConnect app 6.2, uh, but this is our new batch job mission control center. You know, I previously worked for Redwood Software, uh, which makes the, the product SAP business process automation. Uh, several of the folks uh, on the call today also use that technology and you know, our, our experiences together go way back. But uh, batch job monitoring holds a, a very special place in my heart. Uh, some of the capabilities here in terms of what we're able to pull from SM37 and the analytics we can put on it from a trending perspective and a statistical analysis perspective has been very helpful uh, to a lot of our customers, getting quick snapshots in terms of what that environment looks like across different application servers. Again, drilling all the way down into the performance of, of a particular job, any job logs that are associated with it, and we can even search through the spool files themselves. You know, in a lot of cases, uh, you may run jobs in your SAP environment that uh, appear to complete successfully because the results are output to a spool. And when you pull up that spool, 
you find out, oh, the job executed in half a second and there's no data in here. So even though SAP says it completed successfully, I'm not actually looking at uh, the, the information that I want and the job didn't do what it was supposed to do. Um, so having that level of investigative capability to dig into that spool file and let me know if a job that appears to have completed successfully didn't, super helpful to a lot of our business process and functional teams. Uh, some of that uh, real-time performance analytics, uh, we've put together a variety of SAP daily checklists uh, over the last couple years as well, based on different flavors and recommendations from our customers. Um, so this is a dashboard that we can easily uh, apply to your environment that summarizes some of those key things that you might rely on a Excel sheet or a, a PDF document that first thing in the morning when you wake up, you do your daily check on SAP, make sure you're seeing uh, the, the right thresholds uh, being met, you're keeping your SLAs, et cetera. You know, not only can we create alerts so that you don't even have to run that process altogether, but you've got the capability to, to view all of this information in a more visually appealing and intuitive fashion in some of the latest releases of Power Connect as well. And then last but not least, this was a, a specific uh, capability that we included based on the, the request of several customers. Uh, to have uh, an S-Trust extractor. Uh, some of that information has uh, traditionally been hard to get at because a lot of this detail is actually encoded and encrypted at the operating system level. So uh, being able to create alerts when you have you know, certificates that are expiring in the next 30 days, catching those issues, updating that uh, information so that you don't accidentally break an RFC connection or uh, some other business process that's relying on security communications across your environment is enormously helpful um, uh, to have those things handy. So um, last but not least in the pre 6.03 uh, there's interface monitoring capabilities as well. This is uh, goes back to that STO3 data set that I was referring to previously. Um, we have a lot of dashboards to basically drill into the same type of information that you would normally see in STO3N but you have the ability to quickly and easily filter, slice, dice, sort, um, even tab across multiple different types of statistics to view that in a more visual fashion uh, than what SAP ever provides uh, in its native SAP GUI. So uh, I'm gonna jump into uh, the release notes for 6.03 here. Um, I see that uh, there were a variety of chats that were coming through. I'm going to try to make sure that I've got that. Uh, Shelly, is there anything that requires my attention there? Not at the moment. Okay, excellent. Uh, so release notes for Power Connect 6.03. Uh, we have uh, quite a few different HANA extractors and capabilities that we've added to the product here. Uh, as well as some functionality for DB2 uh, that has been somewhat difficult to get in the past, especially if you're on older versions of SAP. You know, ultimately, uh, some of the features here are uh, at the specific request of some of our customers. We were able to accelerate uh, two requests from IPG, actually. So good news, James, Sai, and team. There's now an SM59 uh, filter change uh, that... Uh, basically makes it very easy for you to select multiple different SM59 destinations and disable those if uh, you need to turn certain things off. It also gives you visibility into the, the sort uh, capability uh, and the different types of destinations so that you can dictate uh, from that same screen which ones might be valuable to, for you to extract and which ones aren't. Um, Power Connect job log housekeeping uh, was also a, a feature uh, that was requested by a couple customers. You know, we are pulling a lot of information from your SAP system here. And in order to not create any imp performance impact on those environments, uh, we do it in a very fast, granular way uh, from a job execution perspective. And as a result, every time we run a little snippet of a job, it creates a log on your application server because that's how SAP works. There's nothing really for us, uh, no capability for us to turn that functionality off you know, based on the way that we're pulling that data. So job log uh, housekeeping information is now automatically cleaned up uh, to make sure that we're not 
creating a, a space issue uh, that sits underneath uh, your SAP environment. Uh, we've got a bunch of new extractors as well and uh, some uh, performance enhancements and fixes. Uh, so I'm going to run forward here for just a second uh, to jump into uh, some of those new HANA uh, oriented extractors. Uh, to get some database level information. Now, this is a dashboard that we provide uh, that is the uh, based on the HANA DB audit log. So this is essentially analogous to like your SM20 log at the application layer, but actually getting information about activities that are taking place in the HANA system itself. Um, so breaking out the number of audits by application or username, uh, by event action, uh, we've got uh, the top 10 objects as well as the ability to sort filter by all of the different activities that are occurring there, even down to, you know, house uh, the uh, firefighter activities uh, that you may need to, to report on from a, a compliance perspective. You know, if I look at uh, another, you know, highly anticipated dashboard uh, by many of our customers that are running either S4 HANA or ECC on HANA. Uh, the memory usage drill down is one where you can quickly identify some of those statements that are executing in the background that may be consuming more than their fair share of infrastructure capabilities. You know, so this dashboard here kind of breaks out all of the memory usage by individual component. Uh, this enables you to uh, look at all of the different types of memory usage and further drill down into any particular section so that you can see what that memory usage looks like over time based on the underlying piece of information that is, is running or, or consuming that memory. Um, so in this particular example, we see that you know, between 2 a.m. and you know, really 7 p.m., uh, there was a debuggy uh, statement that was running that was consuming more and more uh, memory over that time period. Uh, similarly, I, I could click on a different component uh, in the, the HANA dashboard uh, to drill down into caches. I could look at column store tables, monitoring and statistical data, row store tables, as well as system information as well. Uh, HANA thread monitoring is a uh, pretty popular new example as well, uh, where you can look at everything that's running in your HANA database and uh, the, the total duration of time, you know, what the calling thread was versus, you know, what uh, these different threads uh, are executing. Um, different thread state, a couple quick uh, slice and dice options there at the top to kind of break out what types of information are impacting your HANA performance uh, over a particular time range that you can search for. So uh, there are, you know, not just HANA oriented uh, new extractors, but a couple others here as well. You know, one of which uh, I mentioned before is the DB2 activities statements extractor. So we'll get every single DB2 statement uh, that your database uh, underneath SAP is executing. Um, we've also got new extractors for SE30 uh, to get you the current trace status that's set. And uh, sometimes uh, if you're troubleshooting an issue, you might turn on a trace in SAP and then yeah, you get an email, you get distracted, all of a sudden that trace has been running for you know, 90 minutes and is starting to, to gum up the works a bit. Now this capability allows you to basically get alerted uh, when there's a trace that's running too long in a productive environment. Um, if any of you use the, the SUW, uh, SWDD uh, workflows as well, there's, uh, we now have an extractor to uh, pull the queue depth uh, for each of those workflows as well. So if you've got you know, five different workflows in your environment that process you know, approval information for PTO, uh, just as an example, uh, this extractor will actually look at uh, each one of those workflows and pull the number of requests that are still waiting in that workflow at the time that the extractor ran. Another good way to, to create some alerts if certain workflows, whether automated or manual, are starting to clog up or, or back up uh, from, from that perspective. Um, a, a very highly anticipated extractor is the 
E070 extractor for transport impact and analytics. Uh, this is one that we're going to be digging into, uh, I imagine, at a lot of different customers over the coming months here uh, to get feedback from all of you in terms of the way that you'd like to use Splunk to analyze the impact of transports that are coming into your environment. Uh, so this data set is going to allow us to correlate uh, this info with STMS data. Uh, put it on, you know, say, the time machine dashboard, take a look at how your ABOP dumps compare before and after, uh, you know, a major production rollout, look at overall response time, or even response time for a specific module or set of transactions that are executing in SAP, CPU, infrastructure, any of the, you know, 7,000 plus data points that, that we already collect with Power Connect uh, could be evaluated on sort of that time-driven basis uh, before and after a transport comes into your environment. Uh, and last but not least, there is uh, another couple extractors that we have for HANA jobs uh, and job performance in your environment as well. So here's a, a very quick look at uh, some of the data associated with the E070 extractor. Um, there is not a, a corresponding dashboard that comes out of the box with the Power Connect app as of yet, because we're really interested in getting a lot of our customers' feedback on how and what that should look like uh, to give you guys the best investigative capabilities out of the box without any sort of um, significant customizations that we need to deliver. Um, and here is a, a quick example of the, the DB2 statement extractor as well, pulling in all of those SQL statements that the various programs, batch jobs, end users, et cetera, are executing and monitoring in that environment. So last but not least, um, before we uh, kind of wrap up the section on, on some of what's new in the, the latest technology that we're releasing later this week, I wanted to make sure that everyone on the call was aware of a new service uh, that Rondos is offering to its customers and has already been capitalized on by, by several of you on the call today. Um, rather than uh, engaging you know, in these uh, you know, short two week projects where and it feels like by the end of a, a two-week period, uh, we're just starting to, to really ramp up and understand some of these scenarios. We've got the Rondos On Demand uh, program that will allow you to consume a chunk of hours on a monthly basis so that you can easily look at you know, particular scenarios uh, that have come up and requested to you from basis or from the business, from a functional team, a center of excellence, uh, and build out those searches without necessarily having to have you know, an incredible Splunk expert on staff. Uh, you'll find with the Fundamentals One training that you'll be able to do most anything and everything from a basic search capability. Uh, but if you're troubleshooting you know, a particular dashboard, you wanna work on you know, getting a new data set from SAP, uh, you've got some new team members on, you wanna go through a training session, uh, it's this type of program that can really help facilitate your adoption of the solution and, and get you closer to the type of uh, environment where 3M is today, where they've been able to shut off all of the technical monitoring that they do in other applications uh, from an SAP perspective and really rely on that Power Connect content. So um, with that being said, uh, I'll pause here for a second, see if there's any questions uh, before we jump into some of the breakout sessions for today. This is Raja, I have a question. Please. Uh, so DB2, except the uh, uh, capturing all the SQLs. Is there anything else uh, you are able to do with the DB2 extractor? Can you show anything? Um, so there are uh, a lot of functionalities as it relates to, to DB2 from pulling in locks, uh, expensive statements. Um, we get information, uh, basically anything that you can see in DB01 or DB02, the database cockpit, um, we can pull in uh, from a, a DB2 perspective as well. Some of the dashboards that Steven shared earlier in the call um, were uh, correlating some of the table lock details uh, that you have in, uh, say, your SM12 transaction back to those underlying SQL statements. 3M um, uh, certainly leverages quite a bit of that DB2 functionality. So uh, perhaps you'll get lucky and get it sorted into a breakout room here in a couple minutes with, with someone else that's already using some of those capabilities. And if not, uh, we can definitely do a little demonstration for you uh, over the next few days. Yep, thank you. 
Uh, Matt, you said that there are uh, not out of the box dashboards, right? Uh, so in that case, like uh, if if we really want to see mainly for the job monitoring when when we are looking from there, uh, if we have kind of a visibility of what are the top most uh, long running jobs we have or what are the top most failure job we have. So for all those things, we have the extractors and that that this particular dashboard design. So it is something like is specific to every client or or uh, it is like we can we can easily make it. So this dashboard that you're looking at on the slide here is out of the box with Power Connect 6.2. Mm -hmm. So if and who am I speaking with? By oh, the way? this is Pradeep here. Oh, hi, Pradeep. Uh, yeah, so uh, the uh, the batch job dashboards uh, are pretty comprehensive that we provide out of the box, but mm -hmm. just about every customer wants to do something a little bit different with them. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have some specific requirements around certain trends or analytics that you want to do on, on the way that batch jobs execute in your environment, you know, whether those are month-end closing jobs, whether those are production planning jobs, ETL to another application, we can definitely dig into some of that information um, yeah, there's there's several customers on the call actually that have done some some pretty exciting things with with batch jobs. Yeah, so at least I was, I was mainly looking for. So there are out of the box dashboards that are also available. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Thanks. Anyone had a question in the chat? Are there any default dashboards available in the Power Connect application for EO seven O? Would love to see some correlation between ABAP jumps and other system concerns after a release. Awesome. Yeah, uh, we are looking forward to it as well. And if there are uh, any specific requirements or suggestions uh, that you have for this, we've been working on a couple beta version dashboards, you know, internally at Rondos. Would love to get some of your feedback on, on what we've got so far uh, and any changes or recommendations you might suggest before we push that out to, to customers. Great. Mukesh has a comment that HANA memory usage dashboard is very good, so that's great. Uh, Sai with IPG wants to know, are there any extractors to be installed on HANA for these? Uh, so it's just the spam upgrade uh, to, to Power Connect. So as soon as we get uh, the 6.03 uh, support pack, uh, from our, our partners at Software One. We'll make that available to any of our customers. You know, Sai, you'll probably start that off in, in YD1 or, or RD1, and we'll move that up uh, into your, your productive instance. Um, get, the, get the Splunk side app upgraded as well, and that HANA dashboard will come out of the box. Looks like Mukesh wants to know, do we have um, SCOT, Scott, setting data? in add-on now? We do, um, and that is in, I think that was in 6.0 or 6.01. Um, so that's that's been out for a while. Um, you know, I recognize that uh, some of you with with really large environments really have to kind of plan when you're going to do these upgrades because you know if you've got 80 uh, SAP production systems where Power Connect sits, it takes a, a little bit of man effort to to go through and, and run all those. The good news for you is that the the upgrades to Power Connect uh, are a little less taxing than the the initial install. So running those spam upgrades. You know, you're you're done with a system in you know probably 15, 20 minutes, and you have the ability to to kick off multiple all at the same time. Uh, we've had customers upgrade you know 40 environments over the course of a week. Thank you. Michael. Absolutely. Uh, can you just a little explain like how it is different from earlier add-on? What is that different that will speed up 6.03 add-on install? Um, yeah. So with Power Connect 5.10, um, there were 10 support packages uh, associated with the, the base installation, and you have to go through the, right. the full Saint installation. So there's a lot of you know, loading packages one by one to the front end <laughs> of the, uh, the, the Saint transaction right. in your client triple zero. It was 6.03. You've got significantly less support packages. You're able to pull all of that stuff in very quickly. And the, the upgrade process is less uh, stringent. You know, there's less changes to the underlying tables and things like that. So it tends to run a lot faster. All right, yeah, I got it. Thank you. Thanks, man.
Yep. So I see uh, Shelly keeps trying to to jump in and, and remind me that I'm probably going over my uh, my dedicated time here. So please reach out if you have any other questions on uh, the latest uh, and greatest Power Connect functionalities. You know, the Rondos team here is excited and willing to to help any and all of you get updated uh, to this uh, so that you can you know, continue capitalizing on the the value that Power Connect provides.